Good morning. Today is the 29th day of May in this 20, 24th year of our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, it's a gorgeous morning today. We have 71 degrees outside, which is uh, much better than the warmth that we experienced yesterday. So I'm hoping the prospects of a little cooler day uh, are upon us. Have some errands to run later in the day, but uh, beyond that, uh, uh, not a whole lot. Do a little bit of painting this morning after we finish devotions and, uh, and move on from there. Uh, I hope you're having a great day and a great week. Uh, this weekend, uh, regional baseball play begins, and uh, both my teams, Coastal Carolina and University of Virginia, and my grandsons, uh, University of West Virginia, are all playing. So uh, I look forward to uh, some, uh, some good baseball and uh, see who advances. Um, a reading today from Romans in the 15th chapter. We who are strong ought to put up with the failings of the weak and not to please ourselves. Each of us must please our neighbor for the good purpose of building up the neighbor. For Christ did not please himself, but as it is written, the insults of those who insult you have fallen on me. For whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, so that by steadfastness and by the encouragement of the scripture, we might have hope. May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another, in accordance with Christ Jesus, so that together we may, with one voice, glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome one another, therefore, just as Christ has welcomed you, for the glory of God. For I tell you that Christ has become a servant of the circumcised on behalf of the the truth of God, in order that he might confirm the promises given to the patriarchs, and in order that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, therefore I will confess you among the Gentiles and sing praises to your name. And again he says, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and let all the peoples praise him. For again, again, Isaiah says, The root of Jesse shall come, the one who rises to rule the Gentiles. In him the Gentiles shall hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Carlo Carlito, in Letters from the Desert, writes the following. Few men have summed up the sanctity of common things as well as did Gandhi in his writings. And I quote, if when we plunge our hand into a bowl of water, or stir up the fire with the bellows, or tabulate in, in interminable columns of figures on our bookkeeping table, table, or burn or burnt by the sun, we are plunged in the mud of the rice field, or standing by the smelter's furnace, we do not fulfill the same religious life as if in prayer in a monastery, the world will never be saved. Jesus was himself the carrier of the message. He was at the same time the supreme intelligence capable of devising the best way of making himself understood and of carrying out the divine plans. Well, what did he do? He did not open hospitals or found orphanages. He became flesh lived among people. He embodied the gospel message in its entirety. He became, he began to act. He lived his message before he spoke it. He preached it by his life before explaining it in words. This was Jesus' method and we too easily forget it. 
In many cases, catechesis is reduced to words rather than to life, to discussion rather than the pursuit of Christian living. And here, perhaps, is the reason for the poor results, and still more, the reason for so much of the apathy and indifference among Christians today. Teaching is ineffective because it is not life-centered. There is no life because there is no example. There is no example because empty words have taken the place of faith and charity. I want to preach the gospel with my life. Charles de Foucard often said, he was convinced that the most effective method of preaching the gospel was to live it, especially today. People no longer want to listen to sermons. They want to see the gospel in action. And let us pray. Use our lives, O Lord, this day and each day to be examples of your way and your will in this world. Let our lives speak boldly, boldly of the words that we embrace in our hearts, in faith, in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And in doing so, we will bring glory and praise and honor to you, O Creator of all. I thank you for the gift of this day and our life within it. I thank you for the opportunities to proclaim the gospel in life, in word, in deed, in our actions. I thank you for the example of Jesus who acted before he spoke, who showed us before he told us, who was to us the very image of you, O Heavenly Father. Bless us, O Lord, this day, that we might be a blessing. Grant us your help, your peace, your hope, your guidance, your everything, that we might truly reveal you to a broken world. Bring your healing through our hands, your peace and presence through our actions. Restore those lives that are torn asunder by war or hatred or indifference or greed. We pray for the peoples of the Ukraine, of Gaza, of other places in this world where tragedy looms. Bring help and help to those that seek your healing presence. We pray your healing for Roger and Hunter as they mourn Nancy. We pray your comforting presence to abide with all who grieve the loss of life, limb, property, the loss of dignity, the loss of purpose, the loss of reason in their lives. Touch the lives of those that are hurting in many and varied ways, who have actual physical pain day in and day out. Bring them help and hope and relief. Bring your healing presence to Nikki and Tom, to Elaine, to Miriam, to, to Laura, to Mark and Katie, for James and Evelyn, and Evelyn Tompkins and Donna, Charlotte and Gail, and for Jenny, for Barry, for Linda, and for each that we commend, for Charles, for Kenneth, for Gay, and for each that we commend to your loving kindness in these moments of silence. For into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you, to be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord this day and forevermore. Amen.